everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to engrave photographs to make special memorialized items with your Glowforge. Today's video, I'm taking two different photos to make this journal and this keychain. Now, this is something that I do not take lightly. Now, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learn. But please remember that we have an amazing honor to be able to make this for someone to, to memorialize something about a loved one. And I'm very happy to do this. So we're going to be using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. And then we're going to bring this into Glowforge. Now, don't forget, there is a link in my description. You can save up to $500 on a new machine. And if you're a Silhouette user and you want to get the Business Edition upgrade, I have that linked as well. Now, these are using links from JDS Industries. I will link the ones that I use in here. And if you're watching, you've been stalking for a little bit, please hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe so you can see all of my uploads and make sure to turn on the bell. Here I am in Silhouette Studio. I have brought in both photos. They came in two separate tabs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it to a reasonable size. Click on there and in this quick access toolbar over in the top, it's this white bar. Click this little box to lock it. The Not a box, it's a lock. And then I'm going to make my width 10 inches wide. I just find that a good size and you can see it's disappeared because I resized it. You can hit this button right here. It's in the quick access toolbar. It's like that little rectangle with like a crosshair in the middle. This will center your design to the page. So now we have this first one. Use this green dot, I'm going to rotate it. So we are gonna grab this love mom and then I'm also going to be grabbing a line from this. So let's go ahead, the same thing, lock it. 10 inches wide. And I'm doing 10 just because it fits well into my workspace. You can resize it to however you'd like. It's, I am just simply, you know, it's a preference. Okay, so now we need to convert these to make these easier to trace. I am pulling the first line from this one and the love mom from this one. I'm going to copy and paste this in here so that they're in the same workspace. All right, so now, um, just like I've done in my other tracing videos, I'm going to the image effects panel right here. We are going to increase the gray shade all the way to turn it black and white, hit apply. And then this one that looks like a little sun, it's the third one in. We're going to increase our brightness. So you can see it lightened it up a lot. And I'm going to increase my contrast, but not too much because you can see that white started feeding down into there. Let's see how it looks with some saturation. That's pretty good. Now apply. So the same thing with this other one. We may have a little bit more difficulty because there's a shadow right here. But that's the thing. If you are going to start making items that are memorialized, um, knowing how to manipulate these images is really important because it's probably not likely that you will receive a good picture. You know, like when I write things for people now, which honestly isn't often, I should write more. I don't think about, oh, I hope someone can preserve this for me. You know, so do keep that in mind, like give some extra love to whoever's doing this to you because doing doing this to you, giving this to you because, you know, they're trying to capture memory. So we have this right here. Let's go ahead and try to trace this love mom. So the trace panels on the right side, it looks like a butterfly and I'm in the first tap. I'm going to choose select trace area right here and let's select this like that. And I'm going to use that little box in there to bring it up. So you can see we have the love mom. I can even rotate it so I don't pull as much from there. So let's bring this down a little bit and tighten this box. We have less to edit out later. All right, so I'm gonna use my little mouse zoom, select zoom. Let's look at it closer. So you can see whatever is yellow is your, your traced item. So we want the yellow to go to the edges of our words. So to do that, we're going to increase our threshold. You can see it start to fill in and then it starts creeping in down there. So let's bring it down until it starts stops creeping. So you can see we may need to kind of edit a little bit because I want more of that love. So let's go ahead, do that. Let's turn our scale down. This just sharpens it up a little bit and trace. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and click on here to fill it in. Okay, so not too bad. We're gonna take that out. Let's kind of work and get our traces first and then we will edit. Now don't forget, I do have another video where I've done tracing like this. If you check out on my channel, I'm doing recipe boards. This is just more of a generalized memorial type of thing. Um, so it can, you know, it's just so that we can get used to tracing. So I know that there's a little bit of a repeat, a little bit of an overlap, but I think, you know, 
you never can have too much learning, right? <laughs> All right, so let's go that over here. This is probably gonna be, I got too excited. This is probably going to be easier to trace because the lines are actually pretty clean. So let's increase our threshold. We have it all the way up there. Let's turn our scale down. It'll sharpen it just a little bit and trace. Okay, let's move this, this to the side. And now we have that fill, okay? So let's look at this real quick. This just has two extra pieces. I like to use the eraser tool for this. Oops, I clicked and dragged and I erased that whole thing. Don't do that. So we have this and we have this. So we're good with that. Let's go through and bring our first trace over here. So now we wanna clean up some of this. So I'm going to quickly grab the eraser and you can get rid of a large chunk of that already. And because I'm erasing it, it actually breaks apart my design. It's almost like ungrouping. So if you select this entire thing right here, now you have everything selected. So if you're used to using Silhouette Studio, you'll know that if you um, hold down shift while clicking multiple items, you can select multiple items. The inverse also works, where if you have multiple items selected, you can hold down shift to deselect some items. So I'm going to deselect what I want to keep so that everything I don't want to keep is already selected. And let's go ahead and delete that. Now this mom looks a little bit choppy. Let's double click to get into point edit mode. There are a lot of points in there. So I'm going to, I'm in point edit mode. You can see in my point edit panel, you can click this right here to simplify. Check it out, way easier. So let's simplify this. I moved that a little bit, so I'm gonna go back. Double click, simplify, double click, simplify. And don't forget, this is getting engraved on something, so we don't have to worry too, too much about how perfect it is. Now this one, the I love you very much is like, pristine. So my computer's not responding. This happens sometimes. I'm just going to wait it out until it just needs to take a minute to think. You know, I'm pushing my computer a little hard. All right. So we have this right here. I love you very much. Now you can keep this together or what I am going to do, because this is more of a memorial thing, I'm going to break this down so that it fits better on the journal. So we have, I love you very much. Let's take the entire thing. I am going to group it. And now one thing to keep in mind is that this is going to go on the same item. So I'm gonna group this right here, Control G. And you can see that the Love Mom is, is thicker, just it was a different pen, it was a different trace. So we're going to grab this right here and we're gonna thicken it up a little bit. The way we do that is we go over to our offset panel. It's in the right toolbar, it's the little star with a line around it. Open up the offset panel, choose offset, and I'm gonna make a really small one. I'm gonna type in 0 0.02 and hit enter. Enter allows me to preview. Let's go ahead and apply. So our offset is what's selected right now because that's the last thing we made. I'm going to control G, group it really quickly and fill this in another color. And let's move this to the side so we can see. Okay, so you can see it looks similar. It's actually a little bit too big. So we're just going to repeat the same process. I deleted that. Let's choose offset again and do 0 0.01, hit enter, a little bit thicker, hit apply, again, control G, perfect, I like this a lot. Cool, so now we can delete this. Now I'm gonna take this love mom, I'm gonna hit this green button right here to rotate. We're just gonna rotate so it kind of fits a little bit better. And you can see that the love mom is a little bit choppy, so I'm just going to go through and kind of see, let's right click ungroup and see if we can fix some of these points. And so see where it goes out right here. I'm just gonna delete the points where it seems to kind of jut out. So we have that right there. And let's go back, I like, like this, but I don't. So I'm gonna group it and move it to the side and see if I can do one more trace. Um, now to keep in mind that first one, honestly is perfectly fine, but I like to be a little bit more particular with something like this because it has so much sentimental value. You know, um, this particular gift is going to be given to a girl who um, is missionary. 
so she travels all over the place so this is something that she can keep carrying like she can carry with her um, so I want it to be perfect um, so I'm just gonna go through and I brought my threshold up a little bit I'm gonna use my arrow to bump it up as I go and let's just leave it like that let's bring our scale down and trace it so this might make it a little bit smoother so I'm happy with that I'm gonna go from there okay so your mom is going to be a little bit thicker you see that so I'm just gonna take my eraser tool and just like really gently like erase like a teeny tiny part of it just so that it breaks it apart so now you can see it's broken apart it's just a little weird trick I do I'm gonna take this love go to our offset panel the star again do offset let's do point oops not two points point zero one enter just a little bit of, uh, around it I'm gonna go in here group it together by hitting control G and oops I'm hitting control Z to bring that back I want that to move together in case I need to redo it so I'm gonna hold down shift and click right on the black that's how I know I have the original cool I honestly think that looks pretty good perfect it matches okay and again that part was not necessary I just like you know when you're doing something like this with Glowforge and I'm sorry if this is like a soapbox like you know we have like an amazing privilege to give something back to people and help them remember someone who meant so much to them so um, I, I put a little bit more pride and I put pride in everything I do don't get me wrong but like it just means a little bit more you know so I am going to our, our design itself is done so I'm gonna go through and kind of set up a square like a rectangle to figure out how I want them to, to kind of sit with each other now we're going to resize this once we get it into Glowforge and this love mom is gonna go on a keychain as well so you know it, it is gonna vary so I'm happy with this I'm going to select both of these and the reason why I'm using Silhouette Design is that Business Edition allows you to export as an SVG. If you don't have Silhouette Studio Business Edition, you do need it. 100% worth it in my opinion. You'll get to see all my tutorials. There's a link in my description for you to buy it if you really want to grab it. So I'm going to grab this right here. I'm going to go to File, uh, Save Selection, Save It to Hard Drive, Choose My Folder, and then I'll see you in Glowforge. Right, my design is being uploaded. You see me in my Glowforge software. I recently just turned on my machine, so the next screen you may see it centering or you may see a photo of the last thing we made. This right here, what's in here are my two boards. Now, for this project, I am using a leatherette notebook from JDS. Um, it is just at a half inch height, maybe a little bit higher. So what I did is I took out the crumb tray the crumb tray was pushing it up too high so I have these two small boards that kind of add up to about an inch so it gives me a nice buffer area um, I'm not gonna explain it too much in this one a lot of my videos do talk about that particularly the um, wood slice video so definitely check that out I kind of want to show you more of the handwriting in this one so that's why I'm not going over it too much now you can see our notebook has popped in here the first thing I always do is I make sure I set my focus this helps my camera focus on where my item is that helps the screen have the right proportion so I can line up my design accurately so this three these three dots in this top toolbar where it says more hit set focus and then click right into that notebook while it does that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my settings so I am going to engrave and then I have kind of programmed my own um, I call it leather 0903 I date a lot of things to make sure I know like when I did it it's a weird way how I work. Um, so the settings I'm doing for this is speed 1000, precision power 25, and 340 lines per inch. I have found that it works really well. Of course, you wanna make sure you're doing test cuts yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Every machine's a little bit different, whether you have the pro, the basic, the plus. I have the pro. It also depends on how often it's cleaned. Um, for example, I am filming this in December, which means I, like many of you, have been working very busily on Christmas orders, um, particularly a lot of engraving. So um, my machine may be a little bit dirty, so make sure you're checking yours. So you can see there's the bottom of our notebook, there's the top. This is the one tricky thing about using this dark notebook is that it's hard to see it. So I can see right there, right there, I want it to be uh, down just a little bit more so it's more in the center. I'm just using my arrows. 
So I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead and hit print. Now again, this is an engraved, so this is going to take longer than most things. And I increased it to 340 lines per inch, which means that it's going to pass more times than other projects because I want it to be detailed. So we're letting that prepare. It's gonna tell me how long it's going to be. Um, and once that's going, we're gonna go through. So 15 minutes, not terrible. I'm gonna jump over, start that, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm setting up the keychain. So here's the keychain. Um, I'm not doing this first part on here, so I'm gonna select that and delete it. You don't have to worry about deleting it because I always save the file on my computer so I can just re-upload it. Now again, the first thing I'll do, set my focus. It's kind of tough with this like brown, so sometimes people will put like a lighter piece of cardstock underneath it, something like that. Whatever you wanna do, I can still kind of see it. I'm having a little bit of trouble because I have you know a light in front of me so you can see me. So we're gonna let that focus figure out where it goes. Because this is the same workspace that we did before, we can just go ahead and keep all of those settings. And all we have to do is figure out where it goes on here. So let's go right here. Gonna make it a little bit smaller. And let's zoom in a little bit too. We're just gonna put it right on there. So I can see it within the stitched lines. I think it's pretty good. Now this will be an even shorter one because it's a very small design. So I hit print. We're gonna let that prepare. Tell me how long it's going to be and then I'll see you over there at the machine to, to engrave a keychain. All right guys, so here are the two finished items. This is the journal, this is a message, the sign, and then a little keychain to go with it. Both of these are from John, uh, no, I'm sorry, JDS. So I'm excited about this one. There's also a cute little marble keychain keychain I'm excited to do. But this is a really great project. It gives me a lot of honor to be able to do this. You know, if you're a Glowforge user or even if you're a Silhouette user who does this on vinyl, I hope you never forget what you're giving someone by doing this. You know, they're able to carry around a piece of someone that they've lost. And I just feel really honored and humbled that I was able to do this and I hope that you share that as well. Now, if you are just watching and you're thinking about getting a Glowforge, let's go ahead and take the leap. You can use the link in my description. It will save you up to $500 on a new machine. And I'd love for you to stick around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more uploads and leave me a comment below. Let me know of a personalized item that you would love to make for someone.